What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. So I'm going to show you guys how to drill for a one-handed bowler on the KMT personal ball jig. Whether you know what your layout is or if you do not know what your layout is, it doesn't really matter. And you can help other people. They bought a new ball, they want to lay it out, they've never had it laid out before. I'll show you what I've done and it's worked fine. So You can either A, lay out the ball, drill the fingers first, and then do what I'm about to show you. Or just use one of your old balls if you have one. And if you do have an old ball that has a thumb hole, you can just draw some lines and then make measurements off of the holes that you already have. And then just kind of transfer onto the new ball. But let's just say, for instance, you don't know. You don't know what your layout is or the distance between the finger holes and the thumb. So this is what I've done in the past. I have someone stick their fingers in the ball up to the first knuckle and then stretch your hand down and lay your thumb across the ball at 90 degrees. And then I would mark underneath the thumb the bottom side of the thumb. So now I know that when I drill my hole, the bottom of the hole needs to be touching this line. And that's gonna be absolutely perfect for me. So I've noticed on some drill balls, you have your vertical line going through your finger holes and the thumb is right there on that line. That doesn't make sense to me. Because you put your fingers in, now you have to twist your thumb back to get it in the ball. And I've done this for a lot of people where I offset the thumb hole off. If you're a right-hander, off, you know, offset left. Left-hander, offset right. But I offset the thumb hole and put it right there so it's touching the side of the vertical line and the bottom of this line. It just feels more natural putting your hand in the ball. So before you drill or put the ball on the jig, first thing we have to do is lay out the ball. So pin through CG or PSA it's an asymmetric and I'm just gonna stick with the uh, the mill layout system because uh, I don't know I like it so after you pin through CG put the zero on the pin if it's a symmetrical ball go down six and three quarters which is the very end of the prosect and mark your theoretical Theoretical PSA. So I had a six and an eighth on this ball. I would like to try. Now we're gonna go from the pin and swing an arc approximately where you think your PAP is gonna land. Or just swing it all the way around the ball if you don't know. I wanna go with a five and three quarters. Five and three quarters, pin to pep. And then PSA to PAP, we will go with a six. Uh, no, we'll go with, I should just stick with that five and a half. Yeah. Five and a half. So there's our PAP. And you, you don't have to use this layout system. You can use whatever you want. So I want a 
Oh god, the devil birds. Inch and a half. So for this layout, I want my finger holes to be an inch and a half below the, the pin. So I went an inch and a half down. I go approximately an inch and a half up off the PAP because my PAP is an inch and a half, five and three eighths over by an inch and a half down. Stretch the line across. Now I come back and check just to make sure. Nope, I was a little off. That's all right, I can fix it. It's actually here. You'll notice there's no more squawking birds from here on out. They were delicious. Okay, now I'm just gonna check everything real quick. Inch and a half down. I'm going over five and three eighths. Which brings me right back to that vertical line. finger hole two finger hole so now you want to put the point approximately where your hole is going to be drilled and then you want to sight down the bit so that the edge of the bit is touching the edge of that 1 8 over line that you made and once you're happy Just make an indent. And same thing on the other side. Now if you know your thumb, I mean I forgot to mark it because I usually don't mark it, but so the center of grip, all right. So I would just measure down I guess I'm gonna go with this line that we made and then just touch the bit to it. So five and three quarters. So from the center line, down five. And three quarters. Just gonna make a line there. Bring the center line down. And look at that. My thumb hole is going to land right where the theoretical PSA is. Interesting. 
So you can do the same thing that you did with the uh, two finger holes by making a little dot. You could do that here. You want to sight down the bit. And I want, I'm not going to actually put the hole in the ball, but if I was to drill this, I would probably offset the thumb hole. So I want the bit to just barely touch this vertical line and just barely touch this bottom line. So you kind of have to sit there and sight down the bit. Just keep turning it, check, check, check. Okay, you think it's good? Push another dot in there. Once you have those three indents, it makes using the jig a lot easier. All right, so here we have the two finger holes and the thumb. So whenever you're drilling on the jig, the arrow on the pitch plate always faces away from you. And you're, when you're on the finger holes, you're always drilling the finger furthest away. So I would, the way I remember is I stick the thumb to one of these posts. Now you're, dr you're drilling the finger hole furthest away from you. If we turn it this way, put the thumb on this post, now you're drilling the back finger. But you can download the uh, sheets that it comes with. If that's confusing, but it's always the one furthest away. Now you want to get your drill bit to fall right down into that little little dent that you put in. So, I guess there's many ways to use this jig and I think in the directions you draw a line down through your finger, but I just use this line, the center line going through the finger holes. And if you were to drill just like this, with it straight up and down, that's a half inch pitch that way. And you can look at and mess around with your pitches. But I find, for me, if I just turn it to the right, a half, that's right where I wanna be. So now you just gotta tighten everything down, just wiggle things around, make sure the bit looks good. Everything's where you want it. But honestly, when I started, I just started just like that. Half inch that way, that's it. Nice and easy. Then I started rotating a little bit to try to keep my track from going over my finger holes. Now when you tighten it down, I try to tighten it down as evenly as possible. All right, now that we have it snug, we can add on our drill. So, for a one-handed bowler, you're gonna be drilling a thumb, so you don't need to go that deep. But I would at least go deep enough so that you can put an entire grip in and not have to cut it down. I don't understand why people do that. Just go deep enough so you don't have to cut the grip. It's like two inches, I believe. But I will check. Yeah, it's uh, inch and five eighths, so. If you go inch and three quarters, whatever, you can kind of measure the bit, put a mark on the shank if you wanted to. But for me, I'm a uh, two-hander, I have to drill these 
all the way down, at least three to three and a half inches deep, because I'm not gonna be drilling a thumb. So I just bury the bit all the way down. God, that bit is like brand new. And this is the reason I do all these little dimples first. Because the bottom of this bit gets really hot, even after one hole. So it's easier if you just get the dimples in now, before. Now I can just turn it. Let me do it this way so it's not confusing. Thumb, turn it to the other post. Now we're drilling the back finger. I don't have to touch the bottom of the bit and burn my hand. everything up again one notch to the right for me or half a notch snug it oh it's a little difficult with a camera in my face but we will live and if you by accident go too close to your because you need that quarter inch bridge in the middle minimum or it could crack so if you by accidentally cut into into deep on the first hole you can adjust and just go a little bit further away on the second one and that little bit won't matter it's not going to throw your layout off that looks good snug it down Head on the drill. Actually, let's see. So if we go Yeah. So you'd be going about two thirds. You'd be going about two thirds of this bit for a one-hander. Just deep enough for the grip. Now for the thumb hole, what you'll do, so here's your finger holes, there's the thumb, you want to spin the ball and put the finger holes towards you and the thumb hole 
away from you. Always drilling the hole furthest away from you. Arrow up away from you, always. And then there's a line through the center of the thumb hole. I always do this just as a visual aid. A line through the center of the thumb hole or where your little dimple is through the center of the grip. Now you have a line to line up with this notch right here. And again, it's all about feel and you can mess around with that, but I would just start with lining up with the center of this line. So this should be pitched towards, it looks like it'll be pitched towards the finger holes. Even though it's offset, it'll be pitched towards them. So again, lock that down. And then for the thumb, obviously, you want to drill it deep. So I would send the bit all the way till it won't go anymore. And then you're good. So like I said um, in the past video, when I, when I ordered these, I got the 31 30 seconds bit, which is the size that you need for the grips. I also got one one size bigger, but I never use it because I hardly need it. And even me, I'm mean like an average size, I'm 6'1". This is 31 30 seconds. I have all the room. It's, it's like actually, once these edges are beveled, that's perfect for me. But obviously, if your thumb's just a little, little bit bigger, you can use a bevel sander and just fine tune it out a little bit and open it up. So once you get it drilled, all you got left is just to bevel the holes. I double the holes, slide the grips in, and before you glue them, stick your fingers in. Make sure it feels right. Yeah, nope. This finger needs a little more. And like I said, if you don't want to buy one of these bevel sanders, you don't have to. I made a video on how to make one that will just fit into your drill. You can buy these little sanding pads cheap and you already have grip glue cheap. So all you need to do is buy a screw. You already have a drill because you're drilling your balls. So you get that screw, you glue on one of those little sandy things. It works just as well as that does. It just gets annoying having to glue the sandpaper on. But if you don't use it all the time, who cares? All right, so now after you get everything bevel sanded and uh, yeah, it feels comfortable. Yes, that feels very nice, actually. Not too shabby. So now you're gonna wanna grab some various Q-tips and a small flathead screwdriver. I think it just makes it a little easier. So I push the grips down until on the high side of them, they're flush with the ball. And then these inner parts 
are a little further down. I hate grips that stick up above the ball when they're done. I don't know why, it bothers me. So I just use the screwdriver, pull the grip back, put a little drop of glue. Oop, that was a, a, a glob. Wipe off the excess. On to the next. Little dab will do you. Careful sticking your fingers in the ball because uh, I've super glued my fingers in the grips in the ball before. It's not good. So now you gotta do, spray your ball down. Wipe off all the pencil marks. And there you go. You just drill the ball at home. The KMT ball jig. You just saved yourself 60 bucks. You didn't have to leave the house. You can do it in your loafers if you like. But anyways guys, that's it for this one. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Give the video a thumbs up. Grab a dirty t-shirt. Get after it. See you in the next one.